Welcome back to the Joe Walsh Show. We begin the second half hour with a look at who is replacing John McCain in the state of Arizona. Then, who are these conservatives calling for the government to regulate Facebooks? And, and, and we close with our gallery of the stupid. Hollywood, once again, ruining another movie. A pretty moving weekend, actually. The, the McCain funeral, John McCain put to rest, um, capping off a week-long remembrance of the senator and the larger-than-life life that he led. Arizona Governor uh, Ducey, Doug Ducey, announced a while back that he would not make the replacement, make the announcement as to who would replace McCain until John McCain was buried. John McCain was buried over the weekend, and Ducey came out and announced today who that pick would be, longtime United States Senator from Arizona, uh, John Kyle. John Kyle chosen by Governor Ducey to replace John McCain. Let's start there with our friend Matthew Makoviak, a Republican strategist, head of the Potomac Group. Uh, do we have him? Yes, I'm here. Good. Hey, Matthew, thank you, my friend, this Tuesday night for joining us. A lot I want to cover with you. Let's start there with John Kyle. First off, were you surprised by the pick? And if you're Governor Ducey, why Kyle? I'm only surprised in the sense that it's a placeholder uh, appointment. Uh, you know, generally you would think that you'd want to appoint someone who could begin to accumulate uh, incumbency, the advantages of incumbency, given that the seat will be up in 2020, someone who can hit the ground running, someone who can start raising money because these Senate raises are so expensive. That said, if you take it from the governor's perspective, I think this makes a lot of sense. Number one, this is someone that the McCain family uh, knows well, uh, trusts, respects, likes personally, uh, and someone who, from their perspective, uh, believe they believe that John Kyle will honor McCain's legacy over the next 90 days or so before the end of the year. So that's that's an advantage uh, for, for, for Governor Ducey. Two uh, is that it puts someone in place who can start literally tomorrow or the day after and not need to hire staff, not need to you know learn how things work. He can start voting right away. He can start contributing to committee hearings right away. He knows the issues well. He knows how the Senate works. Uh, and that's a real advantage. And then third, the other thing that this does is it puts the politics of this appointment past November, which is important in the U.S. Senate race, obviously, with, with uh, Kristen Sinema, the Democratic nominee, the Congresswoman, uh, and Martha McSally, the Republican nominee, the Congresswoman. But more importantly, it puts it past November for the governor who's up for re-election as well. And it gives him now 90 days or so to determine who would be the right person to serve for the next two years until that seat is up in 2020. So as I look at it, Joe, those are the three reasons that may, why, why this thing makes sense to me. Uh, ideally, given that they knew that McCain was, was, was in failing health, he probably should have had someone ready to go. But short of that, he probably didn't feel like he could make the best possible decision and that this decision was the best option in front of him at this time. And, and Matt, are, are we convinced that Kyle is just a placeholder? Great question. Um, generally, yes. He's 76 years old. Uh, he made clear today he's not running in 2020. That would, he'd have to backtrack on that. He knows he'd have to start raising money almost immediately. I imagine at his position in life that has very little appeal. Uh, and he also yeah. has a private sector career that he's been engaged in. So taking three months off, leaving that to do this and then coming back, that's that's at least somewhat doable. Uh, stopping all of that, unwinding all of that, and doing going back to a public sector career full time over the long haul probably isn't doable. So I do think this is temporary. I think it gives the governor a chance to interview people, to seek a wide range of opinions, to talk to the McCain family, but also to find someone who can not just serve the state well, but who can also get reelected in 2020. That's another factor here. Well, hey, Matt, just to play the flip side for a second, what would have happened if Ducey had picked um, a, a strong conservative, uh, a, a younger person who'd never been in the Senate before? I mean, a real solid conservative newcomer. What would have been the danger with a pick like that? Well, two things. Uh, one, as I said before, you know, there's obviously a transition. There's a learning curve. Depending on who it is, if it was a member of Congress, this goes to the second uh, problem, and that is it would have created a special election. 
And I, I think the Trump White House and the RNC and the NRCC, the Republican National Campaign Committee, uh, are at a point now where they're done with special elections. They're tired of them. They take too much money, too much focus. And Democrats have been, if, if not winning special elections, they've been picking up margins and, and draining resources. So, look, I would have loved to have seen my personal choice was John Shattuck, and I hope he gets serious consideration yeah. for, for Hey, Matt, the, uh, the, the race study. in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the race in front of us in Arizona, McSally, the Republican, Cinema, the Democrat, two months out. Play this out for me. What does that race look like to you? I think it's huge. It is huge. Uh, it is probably one of only two seats the Democrats have a real chance of flipping, ultimately, with Nevada being the other. Um, you know, there are different days I feel like one is more likely to flip than the other. I think the fact that McSally got through that primary uh, is a good thing. Cinema is not running as a mainstream Democrat. She's running as a progressive. I think that's a problem for her in Arizona. You know, obviously, Joe, given Arizona's proximity to the border, they have a unique, uh, you know, knowledge base and experience with the immigration issue. It'll be very interesting to see how the immigration issue plays in that Senate race, given that you have two members of Congress who know the issues well. Uh, who'll be able to make their best case. I ultimately think McSally has a better chance to win those voters in the middle than, than Cinema does. So I think McSally probably pulls it out ultimately. But there's going to be an enormous amount of money spent there. And if the Democrats can't pick up Arizona, they're not going to, not only are they not going to pick up the Senate majority, but they're going to perhaps lose seats in the majority because I think they have Republicans have a great chance to pick up North Dakota, West Virginia, Indiana, Missouri, and perhaps Florida. Hey, Matt, I wanted to ask you about uh, Texas, the state you know best, uh, and that yeah. story that broke at the end of last week with Democrat Beto O'Rourke, his 20-year-old DUI, but the police record that he tried to flee the scene of the crime. Just a simple, straightforward question. Is this an issue at all? I think it's a marginal issue. Um, it does go to credibility. It goes to honesty. Obviously, it was a long time ago. Uh, everyone has something from a long time ago that they don't, you know, they're not proud of. I think that Cruz has better arguments to make. I think making the arguments that O'Rourke is outside the mainstream, supporting the $32 trillion Medicare for all, supporting sanctuary cities, supporting impeaching Trump, these are not majority views in Texas. So I would like to see them focus on those things, the fact that Beto is outside the mainstream. I think they will do that. I think that's why Cruz wanted five debates. The first of which was supposed to be this past Friday, but what didn't happen because Beto wouldn't show up. So we'll see where the race goes from here. Um, but I think this is a reminder, Joe, that we don't know a lot about Beto O'Rourke. He is in Congress, that's true. But this national love affair with him, all these profiles, glowing profiles in Vanity Fair and the New York Times and you name it, are saying are telling the positive story. But we don't know a lot about his background, and I think we're going to learn a lot about it over the next six weeks. Wouldn't he want to debate Cruz as much as possible? You would think that. Uh, you know, Cruz was pretty savvy in how he uh, set out his debate uh, details. You know, he said, look, we're going to do what I'm going to propose. And, and as a front runner, as an incumbent, he has the ability to, to sort of drive the, the, the narrative on this and the, and, the, and the specifics on this. He said, look, we're going to do issue specific debates. O'Rourke's really good at doing, you know, going two inches deep in a town hall meeting on 100 subjects, but he's not yeah. very good at going. A mile deep, and I think that's what Cruz wants. He wants to get narrow and deep. How would you pay for Medicare for all? How would abolishing ICE work? How would a sanctuary city? How does sanctuary cities not make the, the, the public less safe? I think he wants to get narrow and deep in these issues. And so far, Beto has not agreed to that. There's going to be pressure on him, I think, to finally agree to it. And I suspect they will do probably three debates before this is all over. Hey, Matt, my friend, thank you. Always enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks. I don't want the government regulating Facebook. I'll explain that next.